Copies of this program are available for $20 each. Send program title along with your address and check or money order to Waycross Community Media. Attention Dub Coordinator, 2086 Waycross Road, Forest Park, Ohio 45240 or buy securely on the web at www.waycross.tv. There's the kickoff. Oh, fumble. Went through, his, went through his legs all the way down into the end zone, and he decides to pick it up and run instead of downing in the end zone, and he's going to be brought down on the five. Number 13, Jermaine Payton on the carry. So it looks like the Kentucky Warriors are going to start pretty deep in their own territory on the five yard line after it went through the legs of uh, one of the up men. I didn't see who that unfortunate individual was, but it may have been um, Mr. Perry who ended up running the ball out. He had a chance to down it and start at the 20, but I guess instinct just kind of took over and he's uh, ran out to the five yard line before being brought down by the Bulldogs. Yeah, kind of a squib kick there by number 15, Ryan Roberts. That's the first time I recall seeing Ryan kick off this year, and uh, it worked out very well for the Dogs as the Warriors now have a first and 10 from their own five. They are in the shotgun. Looking to throw down the right side, and that one is intercepted. Nope, broken up, it. Broken up, at least, by... One of the dogs kind of hidden from our view by the tents there along the sidelines. Yeah, we have a little obstruction, and that came right into the middle of it. Uh, Coach Scott told me before the game, Dave, that the regular kicker for the Bulldogs had his foot stepped on two weeks ago and broke a bone in his foot. So Ooh. their kicking game is not exactly where they want it to be. So second and ten now for the Kentucky Warriors. They've got Jonathan Schweikert at quarterback. And this time he will hand off up the middle. Not much there as the dogs stack him up for little to no gain. Well, Dave, actually before the game, I talked to both coaches and uh, Coach Scott said, uh, we expect them to run a lot. And uh, Coach Jamie Rice of the Kentucky Warriors said, we're going to run a lot. <laughs> so I well, think it's good. They agree. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> so I think we're going to see a packed box for most of the evening, especially both of them try to say that the rain and the wet field aren't really going to affect their game. But uh, you know that they have to be thinking about the fact that these receivers are trying to cut on wet grass and they may go conservative. And we will see what kind of impact this wet field turf has on the game this evening. There's another running play as he avoids a couple of tackles and maybe picks up, oh, perhaps a yard, might have just gotten back to the line of scrimmage. And that will bring up a fourth down as the Warriors will come on and punt it away. A punt from your own end zone. That's usually not where you want to be. The dogs obviously should come out of this with great field position. They've got number nine, Kendall Owens, back to receive around midfield. And an interesting evening weather-wise. It's beautiful right now, but uh, about 5.30 when I got to the ballpark, that's when the rain cut loose, and it rained pretty hard here for about an hour. So, again, we will see how this synthetic surface holds up to it. It's a short punt out to about the 46 yard line that's where it will be down by the warriors and that's where the dogs will take over for their first offensive series of the evening with 11:41 to go in the first quarter the warrior punter actually dropped the ball picked it back up and kicked it out to the 42 yard line and it took a warrior bounce up to the 46 but the bulldogs are going to take over inside warrior territory on their on their 46 so with uh Cam Reyes uh, playing at quarterback where uh, Mike Metzger, the offensive coordinator, said that he expects a big game from Reyes. And he also said that uh, the offensive line, he said, we're not an offensive line that's going to give him seven seconds to throw. We're going to give him about half that time, and it'll be up to him to make something happen. So Cam Reyes starting his third game of the season, coming off an AC joint injury. He sends Nick Metzger in motion. He fakes the handoff, and it is a handoff underneath. Faked it to Metzger and gave it to the lone setback. That's number 23. And 
trying to find him on my sheet. There it is, Demontre Watkins. I knew. Yes, it's uh, kind of a uh, it's kind of a treasure hunt for some of these numbers sometimes, <laughs> which is when you hear the silence, we're actually trying to figure out because we don't want to say, oh, that was number 17. Yeah, we we uh, we really dislike calling someone or referring to someone as the phantom player. That uh, not very professional. We try to avoid that if we can. We do enjoy talking about the disembodied voice of wisdom from the truck. Though. We do indeed. We do indeed. Cam Rice again in the shotgun, calling for motion, and the and no one's responding. Now Watkins goes into motion. They're lucky. They can off pitch out to Metzger, and the Warriors sniff that one out. They will tackle him at midfield for a loss of about four. That's the second time in a row that uh, Reyes has been trying to direct traffic, and he has not been heated. So it looks like there's a little bit of. Uh, a slow start for the Bulldog offense, and now it looks like they're looking at about third and 14, so they've lost yardage on two consecutive plays. A little miscommunication there as Watkins comes over to the sideline. Coach Scott has his uh, hands on his hips, which is usually uh, a sign of uh, vexation from... Uh, <laughs> An indicator that he's nonplussed. Nick Metzger, <laughs> you like that one? I do, I do, it's very nice. Nick Metzger in the backfield with Rias now as Cam takes the snap, he's looking to throw into the slot, that's complete, and I believe that's Dakota Kidd, that's good for about 10 yards, but that's still gonna bring him up four yards short of a first down, so it'll be fourth and four. Yes, Coach Scott is not sanguine at the moment. And pardon me, that was number three, Keith Scott on the reception. Dakota Kid wearing his usual double zero. Looks like the Bulldogs are uh, sending players in and out. Uh, we have someone back in uh, punt formation. It looks like they're either going to block or is number 50 actually the punter? He is indeed, that's Robbie Scott. He is uh, punted over the last several games for the dogs. So they will kick it away on a fourth and well, it looks like nine. And that one is partially blocked, but he gets it away, and it's taken at about the 15-yard line, and he's brought down immediately. Nice open field tackle there. Number 26 on the uh, Kentucky Warriors was the uh, Mason Jordan was the one that uh, took that uh, punt and uh, actually went backwards. I, I think his the point of the catch was his forward progress because the Bulldogs were on him with alacrity. Alacrity. I was hoping you would use that. That's <laughs> an excellent word right there. 8.23 to go and counting in the first quarter as the Warriors come out for their second offensive possession. So glad you're joining us for River City Bulldogs football here on Waycross Community Media. Alongside Wayne Gates, I am Dave Borst. We are coming to you live from Woodward High School. And by the time you see this, it won't be live anymore. It'll be live on tape. But uh, we appreciate you watching anyway. Yellow hankies on the field. It looks like there's a motion of some sort on one of the lines. I think it might end up being called on the Wildcats just from the reaction of the referees. But actually, he's pointing at the Bulldogs, signaling offsides on the Bulldogs. So it looks like the uh, Warriors will pick up five yards uh, without uh, firing a shot, as it were. Five yards the easy way. That'll bring up a first and five. One thing I noticed, Dave, on the, on the sideline, and it, this may be a factor and may not be, but it looks like both teams are relatively short numbers-wise. There's about There were about 30 players total that I saw on the Warriors' side, and it looks like the uh, Bulldogs may even have even less than that. So I'm wondering if... Uh, Fatigue might play a role with either team as the as the night wears on, or perhaps hopefully not any injuries will occur, but they are kind of a part of the way of life of football, so it would seem to be interesting to see how the teams with shorter rosters perform this evening. Schweikert again in the shotgun for the Warriors. He's got two backs with him. He looks to throw, and he's under pressure, and down he goes. Big time rush there from uh, number five, Tevin Redmond coming off the left edge and just came unabated to the quarterback and there wasn't much Schweikert could do there. Coach Metzger told me that he expects the uh, Warriors to attempt to blitz and said that the uh, 
Bulldogs would be ready for that and, you know, essentially doing the, the blitz-breaking plays, uh, short dump-offs into the flat, you know, for five or ten yards, trying to stretch them out a little bit. So we will see if uh, that happens to come true, to see whether or not the uh, Warriors will blitz when they get back on defense. We'll call that one a loss of four. That brings up a second and 14. Ball on the ground, and the dogs have it. The motion man was hit by the snap as it, as it went back. He jumped up at the air trying to avoid the football, but uh, the football ended up on the ground, so the, the motion man's timing was uh, somewhat poor as he knocked the ball out of the air, and the Bulldogs pick up the ball on the 10-yard line of the Warriors. So a gift-wrapped Christmas present for the Bulldogs. They are 10 yards away from the end zone. Big fumble recovery there by the dogs, and that was number 55, Deveron O.J. Simpson, who covered it up. As Rias again in the shotgun, he's got four wides and one setback with him. He looks to throw, looking over the middle, and that one is a little bit low and incomplete, and we will do first and goal again, second and goal, pardon me, Once again, from the 10-yard line. Rias... Uh, waving his arms and trying to get people into position. He's uh, discussing the issue with uh, Coach Metzger at the moment, trying to uh, work out some of the communications issues. But it looks like, again, there's a little hitch in the Bulldogs' giddy-up so far on offense. Looks like the uh, Bulldogs are coming to the line once again. And... Uh, we will uh, kind of give you an idea of who is helping bring this game to us on Waycross once the, uh, once the score happens or uh, some sort of turnover or break in the action. But for now, it looks like uh, Reyes is getting ready to take the snap once again. Looking again to throw. Now he's going to take off up the middle. He cuts to his left, and he is going to get to the corner. And no, they're going to mark him out of bounds at the two. Looked like he was going to be able to turn the corner and punch that one in, but that'll bring up third and goal from the two. And as my partner mentioned, we will be telling you all about the good folks who make this broadcast possible on Waycross Community Media here in just a few moments. Looks we like thank you again for joining us. Rias might have been a little reluctant to turn inside and get, get fallen on by some large people because he just came back from a shoulder injury. Third Cam looking over the defense. Third and goal from the two-yard line. He takes the snap, rolls a bit to his right. He's under pressure, throws for the end zone, but that's incomplete. That will bring up fourth and goal from the two. Decision time. Indeed it is. We'll see what Coach Scott elects to do. And they will go for it, it looks like, as Cam Rias is staying on the field. And I got to believe this has something to do with uh, Brian McCarthy being injured. You think they will perhaps put a very large man in the uh, fullback position and try to get a full head of steam? Wouldn't be a bad idea. They've, <laughs> they've certainly got some size on that sideline that, uh, that they could do just that. Ray has come to the line with the rest of the Bulldogs. Two yards away from the end zone, fourth down. Three wide split out to the right. Metzger in the slot as Rias is going to throw again. Now he's chased. He gets away, looking to throw again into the end zone. That one is complete for a dog's touchdown. There were actually two Bulldogs open in the end zone. Uh, I didn't quite catch the number from this far away, but there was a, a Bulldog waving his arms at the very sideline there just into the end zone saying hello I'm open down here but uh, Reyes spotted a uh, receiver and it is six to nothing in favor of the Bulldogs and now we see what their uh, extra point strategy is going to be looks like um, they are coming out they're gonna go for two in going for two formation so I guess that's an indication of the kicking game as well so Rias with Watkins in the backfield. Looks over the defense, and we'll see if they can punch this in for an extra two as Rias rolls to his left. He picks up a block, but then is dragged down, and the point after try is no good. But that leaves us with the score. 
The River City Bulldogs six, the Kentucky Warriors nothing with 4.04 to go. Dave, who are our sponsors this evening? I'm glad you asked, Wayne. I, I'm genuinely curious about who our sponsors are this let's, evening. Let's see if we can run through those real quick. NFFL football is brought to you by Hooligans Pub and Eatery. Named after you, Dave. By FitWorks Fitness Centers. By Dr. Flada Mayer. We are brought to you through the auspices of Waycross Community Media. Nice word. Thank you. By LA Fitness. I got a million of them. By Buffalo Wild Wings and by Dr. Nicholas Payne of Payne Chiropractic. By Unlimited Carpentry. And by the U.S. Marine Corps recruiting in the Cincinnati area. We thank all of our fine sponsors for making this broadcast of River City Bulldogs football possible. The Dogs lead at 6 nothing with 4.04 to go here in the first quarter. You have an auspicious lexicon, Dave. Well, thank you very much. I'm not sure if you just insulted me or not. Number 15 picked it up on the 20-yard line. 13, that's Payne again, I believe. Jeremiah Payton. Payton, Jermaine Payton, Payton, yes. Jermaine Payton, he gets it out to about the 40-yard line, so the Kentucky Warriors will have good starting position this time. Both coaches talked about their defense, so scoring may be hard to come by here this evening, so that makes the uh, fumble recovery by the Bulldogs even more fortuitous as they turn that into a six-point lead. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not defining them this time. That's true. That's true. You just haven't broken out the phone app yet. That's all. <laughs> now, an interesting note tonight, the dogs are getting some returning starters on defense. We see uh, number seven, Sean Arrington, is out there. Number six, Jelani Bird is out there. And wearing number 12 tonight is Justin Young. Justin, who has been away on uh, extended National Guard duty has uh, been released from duty and he is able to come back and play this evening and if you saw one of his games earlier this season he is a threat coming off of that edge on the blitz especially Just and here he comes this time and he is straight for the quarterback hits him as he throws but that one is almost caught by Peyton Tried to tip it up to himself, but tipped it just a little bit too far. Dave, it looks like you're almost psychic because as you talked about Young, Young got around two blockers and laid a pop on the quarterback. And had he had one or two more seconds to make that throw, that actually might have been a touchdown toss for uh, the Warriors because it was overthrown somewhat. I think uh, the uh, Bulldog quarterback might have... Uh, heard the onrushing thunder of hooves as he uh, let loose the ball. They had timeout called by the officials. We'll see what uh, is going on here. Calling, uh, Coach, Calling Scott. Coach Scott to the middle of the field. Coach Scott is gesturing to the press box. Perhaps there's a problem with the clock. We are showing 2.54 on the clock right now. There is uh, some sort of organizational issue going on. But again, watching that, uh, that pass would just, it was off the hands of uh, Peyton. And if the, uh, who is the quarterback for the Warriors? Dave? Schweikert, if Jonathan Schwe Schweikert. If Schweikert had had just a couple of more seconds to uh, get rid of that ball, that might have been a very long gain or perhaps even a touchdown. So that long throw might uh, give uh, Coach Scott pause about packing the box to uh, stop the Warrior running game. So perhaps they're not always going to run the ball. No, it was a pretty pass by Schweikert, even under pressure, and it looks like they were looking for somebody to take over for a member of the chain gang. That's what the delay was there so it'll be second down and 10 and Schweikert in a bit of a pistol formation now he fakes a handoff swings a pass out oh that's broken up immediately and they're going to call that a backward pass so that is that's a ball that's a loose ball 
And they're letting the dogs run it right on into the end zone. There's a flag on the play. Harrington hit the ball carrier extremely hard and knocked that ball out. He sure did. That was number five, Jontez Jones, who was uh, attempting to make the catch for the Warriors. And what was funny was Arrington, once he hit him, when he saw that the ball was loose and being run back, Arrington just uh, had a uh, very slow time getting up and somehow prevented the uh, person that he was blocking from getting up as well. So <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't intentional. Just to No, no, not, not even a little. How dare you suggest such a thing? <laughs> so a leisurely <laughs> rise to his feet. <laughs> We are having a little bit of fun at our boss's expense, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the other players seem to take exception to that behavior as well. <laughs> but I'm sure Sean would say it was unintentional. So that will give the dogs the ball first and 10. And where are they going to spot it? They drop the flag, and, and uh, they're going to spot him at the, about the 21-yard line, it looks like. So they're not going to give him, they're not going to allow them to advance the ball on the turnover. Right. But Arrington knocked that ball loose with a pretty jarring hit. So for the second time in a row, a turnover deep in Warrior territory has their backs to the wall with uh, Reyes looking for more. First and 10 from the 21, and courtesy of the big hit of Sean Arrington, who is back in action tonight after being injured in the first game of the season. That's complete to Kenny Brown, and that is a dog's touchdown. A beautiful route and a beautiful throw by Cam Rias, and the dogs are up two scores at 12-0 with 2.21 to go in the first quarter. Brown into the end zone untouched with uh, Rias threading the needle of the Warrior secondary and uh, being right on target. So that's got to give their defensive coordinator pause into how to deal with uh, Reyes because if you blitz him, you open up the receivers. If you drop back, he'll run and cut your throat. So that just goes to show you how valuable a mobile quarterback like Reyes really is. Just a pretty play there. A beautiful route to the post by Kenny Brown, kind of a slant route, and uh, Reyes hit him right in stride. And Kenny took it the rest of the way to pay dirt as the dogs once again will go for two. Demontre Watkins is in the backfield with Rice. He's got four wideouts. He's looking to throw as he rolls to his left a bit. Now he's under pressure, rolling to his right. Can he get the corner? Oh, he's hit hard as he gets to the goal line. Are they going to say he got in? No, they will not. They're going to spot the ball probably about the half yard line. It's and certain. apparently the two-point conversion failed again. So with 2.13 to go in the first quarter, the score is now the River City Bulldogs 12 and the Kentucky Warriors nothing. Wanted to give uh, our uh, listeners and viewers a heads up here. Uh, at the end of the first quarter, I'm going to tell you where you can see these, these games on Time Warner, Cable, and uh, Cincinnati Bell. So it's relatively complicated information you may actually want a pen and paper to write down when the rebroadcast will be so i just wanted to give everybody a little bit of a heads up that i will be doing that at the expiration of time in the first quarter which at this point is two minutes and 13 seconds away absolutely grab your pen and paper now because we want to be sure that you get a chance to watch nffl football as many times as possible we appreciate you tuning in and if there are any words that Dave uses that uh, you need to find, we will be giving Dave's personal cell phone number out later this uh, broadcast. So. Uh, no, we won't. No? Okay. No, won't. All right. Well, all right. Just we'll figure out some way. Maybe e email, <laughs> email Waycross, and we'll be defining some of those uh, later in the season. And don't forget, folks, you can follow the River City Bulldogs on Facebook and Twitter. Looks like the Warriors took the ball uh, at the about the 40 yard line chance freeman number 25 ran the ball all the way back to the 33 yard line of the bulldogs so the uh, bulldogs kicking game i think at this point uh is a a chink in their armor somewhat it was a low line drive kick and uh chance freeman able to advance it rather rapidly picked up some nice blocks along the way and they will set up shop at the dog's 34-yard line. 
This is the deepest they've been in Dogs territory in this first quarter. I don't think they've actually been in Bulldog territory until now. I may be wrong, but I don't uh, think No, I think you're correct. I think you're correct. Schweikert again in that modified pistol as he looks to throw again. This time into the slot. It's complete and immediately taken down is number 13, Jermaine Payton. Caught at the 25-yard line. So it looks like it'll be second and two for the Warriors. Clock still on the move. 140 and counting here in the first quarter. It's like Schweikert is giving some last-minute instructions. Got two backs in the backfield with him. And there's the handoff this time. He's out around the left edge, and they're going to run him out of bounds. That is number five, John Tez Jones, again, as he picked up some serious yardage. He's out of bounds about the three or four yard line, it looks like. So the Bulldogs' defense will now be tested. Uh, Coach Scott is uh, trying to uh, instruct his uh, charges, uh, got his hands in the air, yelling, perhaps uh, trying to communicate with his young men before the ball is snapped. First and goal, Schweikert hands off underneath. He runs into the teeth of the dog's line and might have picked up a yard. We'll see where they spot him. Chris Taylor, number 91, big defensive tackle for the Bulldogs, was right in the middle of that and uh, hopped up, uh, puffing his fists in uh, celebration for what uh, he felt was a good demonstration of uh, iron and steel within the Bulldog line. So that'll bring up second and goal then from inside the five. An interesting formation that uh, the Warriors use. Handoff again underneath, and this time he is going to get close to the goal line, but they will stop him at about the one. And that was number 33, Luke Brown, on the carry. An old-fashioned goal line stand, Dave. Two shots at the end zone. I can't imagine that the Warriors would try a field goal if they don't make it this time. And that's the end of the first quarter. And uh, very quickly, we will give you the uh, information as to when and where you can see these games. And then we'll run through the sponsors one more time. Oh, we've got time. They've got to walk 99 yards. They sure do. <laughs> All right. Now, the game for most people is going to be available on the following two channels on Time Warner Cable and Cincinnati Bell. Time Warner Cable Channel 979 and Cincinnati Bell Channel 850. Monday at 7 p.m., Wednesday at 9 p.m. Once again, 979 Time Warner Cable, 850 Cincinnati Bell. Monday at 7 p.m., Wednesday at 9. Now that's for the majority of people listening on the cable systems. That's the Time Warner Cincinnati cable system. The game is also going to be available on Time Warner Channel 24, Cincinnati Bell 852, Thursdays at 12 a.m., Thursdays at midnight, and Time Warner Channel 15, Cincinnati Bell 851, Fridays at 9 a.m. And how are these games possible to be on these TV channels, Dave? And I'm glad you asked, Wayne. Coverage of River City Bulldogs football is made possible by Hooligans Pub and Eatery, by the good folks at Fitworks, by Dr. Fouad Amer, by Waycross Community Media, by LA Fitness, by Buffalo Wild Wings, by Dr. Nicholas Payne and Payne Chiropractic, by Unlimited Carpentry, and new to the broadcast this evening, the U.S. Marine Corps Recruiting Wing. We appreciate all of our fine sponsors support and bringing these River City Bulldogs football games to you. This is Northern Frontier Football League football. And we are set to go with action in the second quarter. The dogs currently lead 12-0. But that has just changed as the Warriors have scored. That's number five, John Tez Jones on the carry. And that is a Warriors touchdown. That will make it 12-6. And we'll see what the Warriors do in terms of the point after try. Looks like they are out in formation to kick. However, well, it looks like they're out there to kick, but then again, you never know. 
I'm not sure how many fake extra points you ever see in your life, but I guess it's theoretically possible. Schweikert to hold for number 50, Mark Deal. As Deal sets up for the extra point. The snap, it's down, the kick is up, and it is good. So that makes our score 12 to 7 with 14.52 to go here in the second quarter. And again, you are watching Northern Frontier Football League action on Waycross Community Media. This is the home of the River City Bulldogs coming to you from Woodward High School on Reading Road alongside Wayne Gates. I am Dave Borst, and if you were just joining us, goodness, where in the world have you been? <laughs> You've been missing a great game so far. 12-7 to 7 is our score. And the dogs tonight coming in with a lot to play for, Wayne. They're 3-2 and two now on the season after a big win last week. And they're looking for a third straight win. And the Warriors are no pushovers. This, this is a team that's been around this league for quite a while. And they have quite a rivalry with the dogs. Uh, I was talking to one of the dogs' owners, Joe Ooten, before the game. And Joe was telling me a little bit about the history and about uh, last year's game between these two clubs in which the dogs were about to go up by two touchdowns. Instead, an interception occurred. It was a pick six, and that got the Warriors right back into the game, and they wound up going for two and won that game, 32-31, to 31, and wound up in the league championship game. They were, in fact, the league runner-up from last year. And in tonight's contest, the kicking game for the Bulldogs might actually be an issue because they scored twice and had two failed extra point attempts. So Short kickoff here. By the dogs, Kenny Brown picks it up and tries to advance it, and he gets across the 40-yard line, and that's where the dogs will set up shop. So another score by the Warriors. Even without an extra point, they'd be up 13 to 12, yes, leading, leading the Bulldogs. So the uh, Bulldogs hopefully will work through their kicking woes at some point and be able to bring in uh, that special teams aspect to the offense and the defense that actually seems to be working rather well. And as we mentioned earlier, their regular kicker, Brian McCarthy, suffered a broken bone in his foot when he was stepped on a couple of weeks ago. So the dogs are trying to make do as best they can. But uh, thus far, they've had to go for two-point conversions after their two touchdowns. And they it, it was his kicking foot, by the way, Coach Scott said. So that further complicates matters. And some yellow laundry on the field, and the back judge is signaling a false start against the dogs. So before we have any action offensively on the dog side here in the second quarter, we're going to back them up five yards. The last time we were here two weeks ago, the officials played a very large role in the game. I think that both teams probably had in excess of 100, uh, 100 yards and penalties. Lots so, of line infractions. So this will be a first and 15 now. motion as Rias hands off to Nick Metzger and he will pick up maybe a yard. So it looks like both teams have uh, run defense down pretty well. Uh, it, it almost seems like both teams are running up the middle simply to keep the defense honest rather than with any expectation of any large amount of success and then trying to set up the passing game. That'll bring up second and 14 for the dogs as they huddle back near their own 25. Keep an eye on uh, Rias to see if he has any other traffic direction issues. Doesn't appear to. Four wideouts. Nick Metzger is the lone setback. Motion again as Rias drops back, looks to throw. He's under pressure. He gets the pass away, and it's dropped. Had Incomplete. It, had it been complete, it would just have gotten a three-yard gain. It wouldn't have even made it back to the original line of scrimmage. So the Bulldogs are now looking at third and 14. And I'm going to go out on a limb and think that they're going to throw the ball, Dave. I, I would think so, yes. Since this is a not a live broadcast, we're probably not giving anything away to Coach Jamie Rice and the Kentucky Warriors. I wouldn't think so, no. 
Three wides to the near side. Nick Metzger in the backfield with Rias again as he again drops to throw. Looks to his left. He's got Kenny Brown almost completed but broken up. Looked like Kenny let that one get into his body and it bounced off his chest and falls incomplete and that will bring up fourth and 14. It's easy for us to sit up here and say that he, he should have caught the ball because we weren't actually involved in the process, but it did look like he had a chance to, uh, to juggle that, but with uh, the defense of the Bulldogs, or the, sorry, the Warriors all over him, he uh, wasn't able to hold on. Would have been a tough catch to make, certainly. We saw some good catches. Uh, we were here a couple of weeks ago, though, from, uh, from both teams. It looks we did, indeed. The talent level on the field here is actually, actually pretty high. A lot of these guys have been playing football for a long time and doing it successfully. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of former high school and college players. You've got guys who just love to play football. That's why they're here as Robbie Scott kicks that one away. It takes a bit of a dog's bounce and then kicks backwards. And it will be down at the 29-yard line of the Warriors. That's where they'll take over with 12.36 to go in the half. And the dogs leading 12 to 7. You got to be pretty happy, I think, if you're the Bulldogs because you've pinned the Warriors uh, back all the way on the 29. And defense has been a strength of the Bulldogs pretty much this entire season. They've had some offensive issues with uh, Reyes being out, and um, they lost one of their games with uh, about five or six turnovers in the game. And it's really difficult to win when you put your own self in the hole like that. But the Bulldogs, I think, have been playing defense rather, rather well. Coach Scott's uh, specialty is defense, and he has the Bulldogs ready to try to pin the Warriors back into their own territory. So first and 10 for Schweikert and the Warriors from the 29. Handoff, nope, fake handoff, excuse me. That one is picked off by the Dogs. He is and still that on his is feet. number 24 still on his feet inside the 30 and brought down finally at about the 25-yard line, and that is Quentin Hunter. Quentin Hunter? Quentin Hunter, excuse me. So a big turnover for the Dogs. That's their second one of the game, and that will set them up nicely deep inside Warriors territory. They're going to mark him at about the 24-yard line. Hunter caught that ball about the 45-yard line of the Bulldogs and ran it back about 25 or 30 yards. Nice play as he just undercut the route and kind of made a basket catch and then let his legs do the work for him. So first and 10 now deep inside Warriors territory. You know, for those of the Bulldogs, don't have to worry about their kicking game. That's true. That's absolutely true. Cam Rias in the shotgun, three receivers to the near side. He's got one setback. That is Demontre Watkins as Rias looks to throw, and he does, and it's incomplete as he overshoots. I believe that was Nick Metzger that was intended for. That'll be second and ten. Coach Mike Metzger having a word with Cam Rias. Looks like Rias had a decent amount of time to throw that ball, so uh, Metzger might be telling him to uh, take that extra second and set up and make sure you make the completion rather than rush the play if you don't have anybody screaming down your throat. Three wides again to the near side. And Rias again will try to throw. This time he's going to take off up the middle, and that's going to be good for close to a first down. They're going to mark him out at the 15. He's going to be one yard shy. And again, rather than cut inside and uh, risk taking the hit and being knocked out of the game, he, uh, he discretion was the better part of Valor, and he's going to be back under center instead of being on the ground on the sidelines because I'm sure that uh, when your uh, opposing quarterback is running wild on you, the temptation to lay a good hit on him is pretty, pretty strong no matter who you are. Oh, absolutely. Linebackers and free safeties dream of shots like that, but uh, Cam is taking good care of himself and doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Third and one now for the Dogs. Four receiver set. A first down here would really hurt the Warriors. 
Rias flush to his left. Still looking to throw. He's tackled. The ball is fumbled. And it's going to be knocked out of bounds. About the 29, and it looks like the Bulldogs will retain possession. But that was about a 15-yard loss. And it looks like they're going to mark it out at the 26. But, uh, yeah, big loss for the Dogs on third down. And An that will bring up a, a fourth and about 12. Not exactly the outcome that uh, the Bulldogs were looking for there. Not the way they drew that one up, I'm sure, as Cam got flushed to his left and was trying to turn his body parallel to the line of scrimmage to get a throw off and instead was tackled and the ball came loose. Fortunate that it did roll out of bounds so that the Dogs do retain possession. And no surprise that Reyes is still out on the field with the rest of the offense because I think everybody knows by now that there will not be a field goal attempt. Right. So fourth and 12 from the 25. And they're too close to punt, so the only other choice they have is just to go for it. Cam steps up. He's going to be snowed under at the 30-yard line. And that, as they say, is that. The dogs will turn it over on downs. And with 10.46 to go in the first half, the dogs lead the Warriors 12-7, to but the Warriors take over on their own 30. Coach Scott appears to be nonplussed once again, hands on hips. Perhaps even vexed. Well, I would think vexation would probably uh, would be appropriate as well because, uh, again, deep, deep into your own territory and into warrior territory and being one yard away from a first down and losing 11, that was not the direction he wanted to go. Schweikert hands off to the setback. He's up the middle for about five, six yards. That is Jones again on the carry. And that'll bring up a second and four. Again, keeping the defense honest. If you're the Bulldogs, you've got to be happy with the defensive line play at this point and the linebackers. Well, and the safeties. I mean, I, I realize I've talked about how good the defense is, but it really, really turns the entire game to have it all clicking on all cylinders. That was very nearly an offside. Oh, Justin Young almost had him, and he had got another shot at him behind the line. He and uh, Aaron Johnson, I believe, got a hold of him. I am amazed that they didn't throw a flag on that play because it really looked to me like... Uh, one of the Bulldogs had crossed the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. That was Justin Young who was trying to snap the or time the snap count, and apparently, at least in the opinion of the officials, he was able to do that and uh, had his hands on the ball carrier in the backfield, but uh, the running back was able to slip away from him. That Schweikert one. swings it out to Jones on the left side, and that's good for a first down and more as he's out across the 45 to about the 46 and a half. So it looks like the Warriors are starting to click on offense a little bit at this point with uh, 9.25 left in the first half. They are on the move after knocking uh, the Bulldogs back 11 yards on a fourth down play when they were knocking on the door of the end zone, and now they are uh, busily moving in the other direction. So first and 10 now for the Warriors from their own 46 just beyond the 46. As Sean Arrington comes up to play down on the line, right defensive end. He's in the backfield and he blows up the ball carrier. That's gonna be about a four yard loss as Arrington was all over Jontez Jones. A really, really sharp and good play by Arrington there. Uh, coming up on the line, timing the snap count and I don't think the running back got but about three steps before being wrapped up. Outstanding play by Sean Arrington. That's going to bring up a second and we'll call 13 as Arrington may have shaken himself up a little bit on that hit. He's uh, holding his stomach. And now he's... Uh, Schweikert again hands off right into the teeth of the defense and that's Justin Young on the tackle. John Tez Jones, the ball carrier for no gain. Arrington uh, down to one knee with his helmet off now on the sideline. So it looks like uh, he may have uh, 
gotten the breath knocked out of him with a gut shot at that point. Hopefully that's all it is. And they gave him credit for a, a yard gain on that play, so it'll be third and 11. First game of the season, Erickton actually broke his leg and was out for a number of weeks uh, waiting for that to heal. Schweiker back to throw. He looks for the slant route, picked off again, and that's going to be a first and 10 for the dogs. That is number five, Tevin Bird. And uh, slammed to the ground in frustration by number 33, Luke Brown of the Kentucky Warriors. I think, isn't that the third interception that they've had? I believe it is. Tevin Redman on the interception, excuse me. Third turnover, second pick. They uh, recovered the fumble early on in the in the first quarter. So an excellent play there by Tevin Redman as he was defending the slant route. And the throw was a little bit behind the receiver. And Redman made a nice play on the ball and able to come down with it. So no harm, no foul. When you turn the ball over on downs, you get it right back on a turnover of your own. And the dogs will start out near midfield at their own 49-yard line. The game has definitely been played more on the Warriors side of the field than it has on the Bulldogs side. Indeed it has. Rias again in the shotgun with Watkins in the backfield with him. Rias looking to throw. Watkins picks up a blitzer and that one is thrown short for Nick Metzger who was looking for a flag. He didn't pick up enough blitzers though because uh, Rias ended up on his backside. A aggressive rush by the Warriors, which uh, head coach Jamie Rice said that uh, they would be doing some of. He was uh, not shy at all in saying that uh, we're going to pressure Rice and uh, see how he deals with it. And in that case, I'd have to give it to the Warriors because uh, that was a successful blitz, forced uh, Rice to uh, hurry throw the before throw. he was ready. Yeah. yeah. Second and ten now. Rias again in the shotgun. Nick Metzger in the near slot. Demontre Watkins the back. Cam looks to throw once more. He steps up in the pocket. He's got some open field in front of him as he heads for the far sideline, close to the first down, and he will get it. They will mark him out at the Warriors' 40-yard line. You could see some hesitation on Rias when uh, he was looking for the uh, for the line of scrimmage and caught in that zone of well, do I keep running or do I jump back and try to hit the open man? But uh, instinct took over and he took off for about a 15 yard gain. That'll bring up a first down for the dogs, but that is not uh, the issue of import at the moment. Right now we have a Kentucky warrior down on the field. That is number zero, Steve Lee. And he appears to be in some very serious pain as uh, dogs and warriors alike are taking their helmets off, taking a knee as he is being attended to by the uh, trainers and coaches from both teams. And again, there may be more knee taking than normal because of the, uh, again, the, the shorter rosters that uh, both teams seem to have on the field because if you've got that's good to see right there as Steve Lee is able to get up and walk off uh, with a little bit of assistance, but uh, he is walking gingerly. You never want to see anybody get injured in any kind of football game, but especially in a game like this where uh, these guys are, they're actually paying to play. That's how much they love this sport. And these are guys who, uh, they're not high school kids who may have a scholarship to look forward to. They're not college kids who may have a pro career to look forward to. These are guys who just love to come out and play football on Saturdays, and you never want to see anybody get hurt. So we hope that Steve Lee is back and healthy as quickly as possible. In the meantime, I don't think it'll be tonight, though, because he was hopping and not putting any weight at all on that left leg. Yeah, he's, he's very gingerly now sitting down on the, uh, on the Kentucky Warriors bench on the far side. So first and 10 now for the Dogs as they will take over at the uh, Warriors 40-yard line. Three receivers to the near side. Rias again looking to throw, this time a quick slant. Quick swing pass, excuse me, that's complete. Good for a gain of about three yards. And he was dragged. Uh, that is number nine, uh, 
Kendall Owens for the Bulldogs. And he was literally dragged 10 yards back by the Warriors before they threw him to the turf. Normally the referees really don't let that kind of activity go on too long because that's what uh, what's, what uh, causes uh, disagreements. And I don't, I, I don't understand this at all. His forward progress took him down to about the 37 yard line and the officials marked him for no gain. That which is, brings up a second and 10. I, that's, I, we'll have to grab an official at halftime or something and see uh, what that's all about. But uh, he had picked up at least two to three yards on his forward progress. But at any rate, Cam Rye is looking to throw again. He does throw over the middle, and that one's intercepted. That's that is Mason Jordan, number 26 for the Warriors. And he is marked out of bounds in dogs territory at the 42 yard line, 41 yard line. So back to back turnovers on back to back series here for the Warriors and the dogs. And the Warriors will take over. I think that's back to back to back turnovers. Actually, the change of possession has come three times on turnovers from both teams. So that'll bring up first and 10 for the Warriors from the Dogs 41 yard line. When they get the chain set. And Cam was looking over the middle and there was nobody there but a bunch of white shirts. Looks like Arrington is still on the sidelines as the uh, Bulldog defense goes back. So he may have taken a pretty hard shot to the gut. And off to Jones over the right side. Justin Young drags him down. And a pretty good pop delivered by Jelani Bird as well. Jelani is another one who has been injured and is making his return to the lineup tonight. Gain of about one on the play, so that'll bring up second and nine from the Dogs 40. There's certainly been more action on the field than the 12 to 7 score would indicate at this point. It's been a good game so far. 438 and counting. And again, we invite you to come out to Woodward High School anytime you feel the desire to watch some competitive live football. And the uh, pass for the uh, Warriors was incomplete. Number six, David Mallory was knocked to the turf by number six for the Bulldogs, Jelani Bird. Jelani laid a wallop on him there. That brings up third and nine. The Dogs will be home next on July 26th when they will be taking on the Cincinnati Hawks right here at Woodward High School at 7 p.m. Be sure to join us that evening. Make your plans now to watch some Northern Frontier Football League action here at Woodward High School. Schweikert again looking to throw, takes a few steps to his right, throws almost intercepted again by Quentin Hunter. But it falls incomplete and that will bring up a fourth and nine. Bulldogs flirting with uh, disaster a little bit there because uh, Schweikert took a, uh, took a shot up high, uh, almost to the face from the uh, on rushing Bulldog player I didn't quite catch the number but uh, the referee was standing right beside him and uh, he can't get away with too much of that no they uh, they tend to try to protect the quarterback as much as possible 335 with the clock running and we'll see what the Warriors elect to do here on fourth and nine Schweikert is still on the field Almost like he's the punter. He's so far deep. He's yeah, 15 he's, yards off the line of scrimmage. He's almost set up in a punt formation, but let's see if he comes forward. And uh, well, They are in punt formation at this point with Schweikert as the punter. He's coming up to the line a little bit. but And he does kick it away, and it's a decent one. It's taken back inside the five-yard line, dropped and then picked up and run all the way out to close to midfield. That's number nine, Kendall Owens on the return and a great return indeed. About 40 yards. As he is marked out at the 47 yard line for the dogs. So that's where they'll take over with 2.51 to go. 
And I got to believe Coach Scott and Coach Metzger and the whole Bulldog gang would love to punch one in here. I think right they before would. Before halftime. I think they would because, as I said, there's been a lot of action on the field, but a lot of that has been turnovers. Both teams have put together drives of 20, 30, 40 yards only to see them come to an end with a turnover, and then the other team does the same thing. So, And evidently we had a holding call on the play that uh, neither one of us saw as they're backing the Bulldogs up. We'll see where, in fact, they spot the ball. It looks like they're backing them up to the point to where the uh, ball was caught by Owens originally because they are now putting the line of scrimmage, it looks like, on the 11-yard line, and he was up all the way up to the 47, so clearly there was some sort of infraction. Saw one of the Warriors players signaling hold. I did not see an official make a signal. Wow. But we'll assume that's what it was. So what was terrific field position now is not. That's essentially a 35-yard penalty. It will be first and 10 for the dogs from their own 11. A couple of first downs, they can at least go to the locker room without giving the Warriors another chance at the football. But that would be a minor victory compared to a score. And got to take care of the ball this deep in your own end as Cam Rias is trying to get away and throws and that one again thrown toward a white shirt. Very, very nearly intercepted by number 45 for the Warriors, Sean Ziegler. If that ball had gone in the air another couple of feet, Ziegler would have uh, just basket caught it at the 10 yard line. So that's probably not a good decision on Rias's part right there. Dangerous play indeed as they We'll look at a second and 10 now from their 11. And the last thing you want to do is gift wrap a touchdown for the Warriors here when you're this deep in your own end, your own end of the field. Having the Warriors get an interception or some sort and running it back for a score and going into the locker room with the lead would not be a good thing for the Bulldogs' morale. Rise to throw. That's complete to Kenny Brown as he cuts toward the middle of the field, still on his feet. And he will be out near a first down, and he will have it. Looks like they're going to mark him at about the 24. That was all Brown's effort right there. The last uh, six or seven yards, he was carrying some Warriors with him. So a nice throw and catch and a nice pickup by Kenny Brown. Those are the yak yards, my man. <laughs> yards after contact. Indeed. First and 10 now for the Dogs. Clock still moving at 2.25 to go in the first half. Rias throws over the middle. That's complete to Keith Scott, and he is out to the 45-yard line. Another first down for the Dogs, and now they've got a sense of urgency about them as they are looking at the clock and seeing that it's still moving, and they are moving the ball as well. They're going to mark that at the 44. That will be a first and 10. Brown and Scott for the Bulldogs kind of got tangled up with each other on that on that. Uh, Reception looks like their uh, routes might have been a little bit too close together. It looks like uh, coach. Well, no, it's the two minute warning. Two minute warning indeed. 12 to 7 is our score. We have two minutes left to go here in the first half. And we'd like to tell you one more time about our fabulous sponsors who are making this broadcast of Northern Frontier Football League possible. You are watching the River City Bulldogs minor league football team courtesy of Hooligans Pub and Eatery. Also brought to you by Fitworks. By Dr. Fouad Amer. By Waycross Community Media. By LA Fitness. By Buffalo Wild Wings. By Dr. Nicholas Payne and Payne Chiropractic. By Unlimited Carpentry. And by your U.S. Marine Corps recruiter. I was uh, following Dave's hand signals there. Dave, you are a fabulous announcer yourself. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, if, if you weren't grinning from ear to ear like a Cheshire cat when you said that, I, I might actually take that as a compliment. But I'm just happy to be here, Dave. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just happy to be here. hope I can help the ball club. Neither team has called a timeout to this point with two minutes left in the first half with so many turnovers and uh, so much yardage being exchanged. Uh, it just hasn't uh, apparently become necessary, but it looks like uh, 
Coach Scott is going into the two-minute warning with his team on the 44-yard line of their own 44, 56 yards away from the end zone with three timeouts at his disposal. So we'll see how the Bulldogs do with the fabled two-minute offense. Rias in the shotgun. Watkins is the setback. Rias throws. That's complete to Dakota Kidd. That's a pickup of about five yards. That'll bring up a second and five as the dogs hustle back to the line of scrimmage. Clock continuing to run. Rias looking to throw as he rolls to his right, looking for Kenny Brown. What a snag by Brown. Beautiful catch down inside the 30-yard line. Beautiful play by Kenny Brown as he caught the ball at its highest point between two defenders. Way to go, Kenny. That was a fantastic catch, and it stops the clock while the chain gang moves, but now the clock is running again, and the chain gang is not yet set up. 125 to go and counting. Rias again to Dakota Kidd. He makes one man miss. He's got a first down. Oh, and he's body slammed at the 15, but able to pop right back up. And the officials will try to get the ball set as quickly as possible as the dogs are executing their two minute offense to perfection right now. And timeout is called on the field. Chance Freeman of the Warriors seemed to take exception with that run and decided that he would like to end it decisively. Indeed he did. And uh, you got to tell him, pick on somebody your own size. Dakota is one of the smaller guys out there, but he's also one of the toughest. A beautiful catch and run there is again. The dogs are executing that two minute offense very well right now with 115 to go. They're leading 12 to seven. Looks like this timeout has actually been credited to the Warriors, which uh, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I'm not sure why you would call timeout when you're on defense with less than two minutes in the game, but that's who the scoreboard has indicated that the timeout was called by. I did not see the signal of the official as to who the timeout was charged to, but you can see Coach Scott out uh, talking to his offense and the Bulldogs with the way the turnovers have been going in this game, I'm sure would like to go into the locker room with another touchdown on the tally. Absolutely. That would be a minimum of 18 to seven and which would put their lead into a two score lead. I'm not sure what the kicking game of the uh, Warriors is like. They did manage to kick an extra point, but neither team has attempted a field goal in the first half. Snap to Rice. He will hand to Demontre Watkins, and he is met after a gain of maybe a couple. Clock will continue to run, 105 and counting. It's like that will bring up second and seven. Coach Scott sending number 21 for the uh, Bulldogs in. That's Nick Metzger. And uh, having some strong words on the, uh, on the sideline with some, uh, some other players, uh, apparently uh, hoping to motivate them to either do or not do whatever he is uh, concerned about. He is continuing to bark at the players on the sideline. Rias to throw. He swings oh. it outside for Watkins. That falls incomplete. That was a relatively poor throw from Rias uh, up high and over the head of uh, the intended receiver for the Bulldogs, number 23. Demontre Watkins was the intended receiver. And Rias had a little pressure in his face there. That brings up a third and seven. With 33 seconds left to go. So realistically, um, I would expect Coach Scott to call another timeout on this play, especially if it's a running play that uh, continues to make the clock run. Might as well go to the locker room with uh, all the timeouts used instead of letting them disappear. Yeah, they won't let you use them in the second half. That's for sure. Rias steps up into the pocket. He's still looking to throw, still looking. Now he takes off. He's got the first down, and they will mark him out of bounds at the five-yard line with 25 seconds to go. Now here is where execution and paying attention to clock management and uh, the efforts of the players is extremely important. I think that uh, Coach Scott would be extremely frustrated to see a chance for a touchdown slip away because someone didn't do what they were supposed to do under the circumstances. First and goal from the five with 25 seconds to go. 
No and time. No timeouts been called. The Bulldogs are still in the huddle. It looks like looks like they could be flirting with a uh, delayed game penalty if they don't get to the uh, line of scrimmage, which also I think would vex Coach Scott somehow. There's no play clock on the uh, on the scoreboard, but they're getting close. Rias to throw as he rolls to his right. He's got Nick Metzger for a dog's touchdown. 20 seconds to go in the half, and Metzger dances into the end zone untouched, and that makes it 18 to seven, courtesy of the River City Bulldogs. There was not a Warrior defender within three or four yards of Metzger. Metzger just took the ball, turned around, and walked in completely unmolested. Beautiful play by the dogs with 20 seconds to go, and I'm sure they would love to successfully convert here on the two-point try. 20 to seven would just be one point off kicking the extra point, so this would be this would be a good one to make for the uh, for the Rias Bulldogs. throws and it's broken up. That's going to be no good. He was looking for Metzger again, so the score will remain 18 to seven with 20 seconds to go in the half. The River City Bulldogs lead the Kentucky Warriors. You were watching NFFL football, courtesy of Waycross Community Media. We are so glad you joined us. Yeah. Alongside my partner, Wayne Gates, I am Dave Borst. We are at Woodward High School on Reading Road in Cincinnati, Ohio. And again, we want to invite you out to the next Dogs home game. That is going to be on Saturday, July 26th, when they take on perhaps the class of the Northern Frontier Football League the Cincinnati Hawks. That would be plenty of time to clear your calendars. Absolutely. Absolutely. 20 seconds left on the clock. And as before we go to halftime, um, I will give you folks an opportunity to, again, if you missed it the first time, get your pens and paper to write down when the game will be broadcast again. And I neglected to mention last time that the game is also available online at Waycross's website under the on-demand section. Absolutely, and that is waycross.tv. So click there and look under the on-demand section and look for the title, River City Bulldogs, and you'll be able to see this game and all the others that we've covered so far this season. Ryan Roberts will kick it away. Again, a low line drive, and again, that's snagged by one of the up men, and he is out close to midfield. That's number 33, Luke Brown, on the return. That is probably an aspect of the game that Coach Scott would like to shore up, absolutely, because at some point, if you continue to give your opponents the ball back on the 50-yard line, and this is the second time this has happened, then eventually you're going to get burned. It just makes it that much harder for your defense because they're giving up 30 or 40 yards they normally wouldn't. And again, we, we want to mention one more time, no one's coming down on Ryan Roberts. Ryan is not a normal kicker. He's a backup quarterback. And uh, the dogs are without their regular kicker, Brian McCarthy, who was stepped on a couple of weeks ago and broke a bone in his kicking foot. So, And that's such a specialized skill that takes years to master. You absolutely. Just, you just can't walk out there and kick the ball 60 yards. Absolutely. Hand off to John Tez Jones around the right side. He's still on his feet. He's going to get out of bounds inside the 45-yard line with five seconds to go. That will bring up a second and four, second and five, as they will mark him at the 45. I note that uh, Joe Uten has been promoted from water boy to equipment manager on our list here, but I, I think that might not be a full explanation of, uh, he's, of he's, Joe's responsibilities. He's working himself right up the ladder. He's also part owner of the River City Bulldogs, folks. So I guess he could fulfill any job he wished. That's, that's his fellow owner, Sean Arrington, having a little fun with him there. Schweikert in that modified pistol again. And he will look to throw as he swings it outside. It's complete. Ball on the ground, and the dogs will come up with it. And that's going to end the half on a turnover. And that's it. Ball picked for up the first half by Justin Young, number 12, linebacker. And the ball, the half ends on a turnover, which I think I have, I should have been keeping count on paper, but that's got to be at least the fifth or sixth turnover between the two teams in the first half alone so absolutely and that's the fourth one that the dogs have recovered 
So we are at halftime at Woodward High School on Reading Road in Cincinnati. Wayne, tell the folks one more time where they can watch these games. Most people, including Time Warner customers within Cincinnati proper, will be seeing this game on either channel 979 on Time Warner Cable or channel 850 on Cincinnati Bell. And one thing to note, Channel 979 on Time Warner Cable. I happen to be a Time Warner Cable customer, and I looked on my guide. Uh, channel 979 isn't on the guide. You literally have to punch it in on your remote. So that might be something to keep in mind. But Channel 979, Time Warner Cable. Channel 850, Cincinnati Bell. That's Monday at 7 p.m. and Wednesday at 9 p.m. So that's two days from now. And five days from now where you'll be able to see that. The game is also offered on Time Warner Channel 24 and Cincinnati Bell 852 Thursdays at midnight and Time Warner Cable 15 and Cincinnati Bell 851 Fridays at 9 a.m. And again, waycross.tv and look under the on-demand section and you'll be able to find the game there as well. So plenty of opportunities to see the game, but it doesn't beat the experience of seeing it in person, does it, Dave? Absolutely not. Coverage of River City Bulldogs football was made possible this evening by Hooligans Pub and Eatery. Fitworks. By Dr. Fouad Amer. By Waycross Community Media. By LA Fitness. By Buffalo Wild Wings. By Dr. Nicholas Payne and Payne Chiropractic by Unlimited Carpentry, and by the U.S. Marine Corps recruiters of Cincinnati. We thank all of our fine sponsors for making this broadcast possible. Stick around. We will be back with coverage of the second half. The River City Bulldogs lead the Kentucky Warriors 18-7, and we will be back in just a few moments. And we welcome you back to Woodward Stadium on the campus of Woodward Career and Technical High School in Cincinnati. You are watching Northern Frontier Football League football action through the auspices of Waycross Community Media. You like that auspices, word? Auspices, yes. That's a good word. And alongside my partner, Wayne Gates, I am Dave Borst, and you are watching the River City Bulldogs take on the Kentucky Warriors. And we are just about set to go with second half action. The dogs will be receiving the kickoff after punching in a touchdown right before halftime to take an 18 to seven lead. And Wayne, some of your impressions and thoughts. Well, we'll get back to that as we're set to kick here. Number 63, Nathan Newton kicks it off. Short kick and it's fumbled by the dogs, but he falls on it. And he's let me get the number there. That's number 20, Darian Washington, who had that one bounce off his chest. It rolled forward, and he was able to cover it. So no harm, no foul, and the dogs will take over on their own 34-yard line with 14.52 to go in the third quarter. And, Wayne, as I was saying, some of your impressions of the first half. Uh, it seems like both teams were having issues with uh, holding on to the ball. We had a number of turnovers and it's it, the Bulldogs, I think, by virtue of their superior defense and Cam Reyes' play on offense, have been able to come out on top. But uh, both teams are kind of fortunate they're not in a deeper hole than they are. Yeah, the Dogs should be, by my count, plus three in the turnover margin. They recovered four turnovers in that first half as Reyes looks to throw, and there's a turnover right off the bat. That one is trouble as he is down the sideline and he will be tackled. Robbie Scott got to him along the sideline. That is number 34, Jeffrey White, with the interception and run back. And so the Warriors will take over. Excuse me, that was number 30, John Hairston, I believe on the interception. So the Warriors will take over deep, deep inside the Dogs' territory with 14.42 to go now in the third quarter. And they will have a first and goal at the seven. If they score here, they're going to put themselves right back in the ballgame. 
High snap to Schweikert, but he's able to corral it and hand off to Jones. He's tackled in the backfield. That's going to be a loss of maybe two on the play. Chain gang with the, uh, with the chains on the ground. They're either going to score or they're going to turn the ball over. No chance of making a first down between here and the goal line. So it looks like they're on that eight, perhaps. Second and goal from the eight. Yes, sir. I've got a bad angle. As do I, sir. Schweiker shifting his backfield around. He's in that modified pistol again with one setback next to him. He will take a few steps to his left, and he'll pitch it out to Jones. He's met in the backfield again. Flag on the play. And let's see what happened here. Well, it's behind that tent where we can't really see, so it's either a block that was probably that the referee is pointing toward the Warriors, so they'll be losing some real estate here. Perhaps a hold? Well, I guess we'll, we'll see. No signal yet from the man in the white hat. I haven't seen him signal a penalty all evening, to be honest. Well, perhaps you'll see your first one. Pass interference. Offensive pass interference, apparently. So that'll... That'll back him up at least 10 yards. I'd, illegal block in the back, excuse me, misread the, uh, the hand signal. I was about to say, how do you have pass interference on a running play? But illegal block in the back is the call. So that puts him back at the 22-yard line. First and goal at the 22, so... You got to think the Bulldogs are happy with that little bit of extra real estate. That might make the difference between keeping them out of the end zone. Jones will take a breather as number six, David Mallory, comes into the game for the Warriors. So are we in an official timeout when they are trying to move the chains? Or there we go. The clock is running now, and the uh, Warriors are on the clock, so to speak. Well, it was. Usually when the referee blows his whistle and cranks his arm, that means that the clock should start. Handoff is to Mallory up the gut, and he's going to pick up a couple. And the clock is still not running. That's going to bring up third and goal from the 20-yard line. I think the uh, Warriors picked up about 30 seconds of clock time there. Because I believe they did as the clock is now rolling. 13.35 to go here in the third quarter. Third and goal from the 20. Snap to Schweikert. He drops back to throw. Looks down the middle. He's got a man, and he's upended at the five. So that will bring up fourth and goal from the five, and let's see what the Warriors elect to do. Kind of an acrobatic tackle there. He uh, spun in the air a little bit, but managed to hold on to the ball. Jones checks back into the game. Looks like it's uh, fourth down. Fourth and goal from the five. Big play here. Schweiger throwing over the middle, complete, and that's a Warriors touchdown. That was good for number one, Michael Weber. Now, if you're the Warriors, do you try to go for two and get within three, or is this... A field goal, just a, a, a beast that we will not see this evening. Well, they're going to set up to kick the extra point again. Number 50, uh, Mark Deal is their field goal kicker. Schweikert will hold. Deal uh, kicked an extra point in the first half, and that's what he's attempting here. He was successful in the first half. Snap, place, kick, and that one is no good. May have been partially blocked, but wide right. So that leaves our score at 18 to 13 in favor of the River City Bulldogs with 12.44 to go. And Wayne, shall we tell the folks one more time about the wonderful people and sponsors who make this broadcast possible? Dave, I would like nothing better than to tell the folks who makes this who make this broadcast possible. You're watching NFL 
NFFL football. I'll say it right. The River City Bulldogs hosting the Kentucky Warriors and coverage tonight is made possible by a bunch of hooligans. Hooligans and Pub and Eatery. By Fitworks. By Dr. Fouad Amer. Waycross Community Media at www.waycross.tv. By LA Fitness. By Buffalo Wild Wings Grill and Bar. Love Buffalo Wild Wings. By Dr. Nicholas Payne of Payne Chiropractic. By Unlimited Carpentry. And a new sponsor on the program tonight, the U.S. Marine Corps Recruiting Arm. And an oorah to everyone. Oorah indeed. 12.44 to go as here in the third quarter. As opposed to hua. That would be a ranger call, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Do not oorah an Army Ranger. No. Nor, nor do you hua a Marine. No. Indeed not. Kick is taken back at the 20-yard line. Still on his feet and out across the 35. And that is number 25, Barrington Savage on the return. Sa Savage took a, took a little bit of a shot as he stood up from one of the uh, Warriors who uh, seemed to take exception to the fact that he ran the ball all the way back to the uh, 38. Not a, you know, a, a bad thing, so to speak, more of a Please stop running. <laughs> First and 10 now. They're going to mark him at the 36. And we'll see if the dogs can respond offensively after the turnover on their first series here in the second half that led to six points for the Warriors. Rias in the shotgun. He hands underneath to Nick Metzger. Metzger tries to bounce to his left, and he's going to be taken down for a loss of about two. Back to the 35. So as, uh, as announcers like us tend to say in situations like this, it is still anybody's game here. Indeed it is. We've, we've seen quite a ball game tonight, uh, turnovers included. It's still been very exciting. The first team to get the turnovers under control, I think, is the one that's going to take the ball game. This will bring up a second and 12. Dogs in that familiar four receiver set. I haven't seen Rias have any frantic hand signals lately. And we've got a flag on the play and a big hit there. And it may have been for naught because the flag looked like it was thrown in the uh, Bulldogs' side of the field. Probably some, some sort of uh, motion malfeasance. Well, I'm seeing the, the near side judge is, is signaling an offsides against the Warriors. Hmm. And that is the call. Did you like that alliteration, motion malfeasance? Indeed. Indeed. You've had that one in your hip pocket all night. I have, yes. So the dogs will pick up five the easy way, but that still brings up a third and about six. Third and about six at the 41 yard at their own 41 yard line. Uh, there are big plays throughout the football game, and I would say that this is probably a big one for the Bulldogs. Rias to throw. He swings it out to Demontre Watkins. He cuts it back toward the middle. He's going to be upended, and they will mark him at the 46-yard line. That's a gain of about four. And they were calling that second down. So Yes, they were. So that will bring up third and two, third and three. Now it's third down. A long two, two and a half. I believe so, yes. We got a pretty good angle on that one. Yeah, as they move closer to midfield, our angle gets better, folks. We're kind of at the, the very end of the press box up here. I'm sitting at the 46-yard line of the Warriors. Dave's on the 50. He's got a better seat than me. As it should be. Back to <laughs> Ryan's looking to throw. 
And he is going to be snowed under as he was looking for somebody to throw to, and there was nobody open. And he's going to lose a couple more yards, and that will bring up a fourth and about five. Looks like many of the people in the stands directly near us are uh, Warriors fans who were pleased with that development. Quite a few Warriors fans here this evening. So if the Bulldog fans are watching us on tape delay, rather than being here live, you could have the best of both worlds. Watch the game live and then again watch it on TV and be able to see it twice. There you go. Absolutely. Ten minutes to go now in the third quarter and fourth, and we'll call it a long four for the Bulldogs as Cam Rias is in the shotgun again. Nick Metzger is the setback. Rias will throw, roll to his right, looking to throw. He gets the pass away across the middle, and that's a bad decision as it's intercepted. Number 26, Mason Jordan for the uh, Warriors, still on his feet, finally brought down at the 40 one yard line of the Bulldogs. And Cam was looking for a receiver across the middle of the field and you hear it so many times, quarterbacks get in trouble when they try to throw back across their body to the middle of the field and that's what happened there. Cam just unable to get uh, enough oomph on the ball to get it past Mason Jordan. So another interception for the Bulldogs and the Warriors will take over now in Bulldog territory at the 43-yard line, 42-yard line. A lot of players in Reyes's position sometimes feel like they have to force things because they feel like it's all on their shoulders and then they try to depend on their athleticism and sometimes end up making a bad decision. Hand off to Jontez Jones. He breaks tackles in the scrum at the line of scrimmage and gets out around the left edge and he'll pick up about six. Actually more than that, they're gonna mark him close to the first down. The Warriors will take the lead if they happen to score on this possession with 9.03 left in the third quarter. Something the Bulldogs I'm sure would like to uh, not have happen and looks like one of the uh, folks on the chain gang are being encouraged to get in the proper position because they did give him a first down they did indeed first and ten for the warriors as schweikert takes the snap he's looking to throw and throw he does he's got a man open in the end zone did he know he was not able to hold on in and out of his hands he went down on the ground and caught the ball on the ground and it just happened to pop out and it looks like the quarterback for the Warriors, uh, Swire, Swikert rather, is uh, having quite a bit of time. His line is holding, giving him a chance to get those receivers down the field. So they may not be running as much as they uh, intimated at the beginning of the uh, of the game. Swikert has a, a unique way of taking that snap. Also, he actually is almost bailing out when uh, he receives that shotgun snap at times. Hand off to Jontez Jones is good for a couple of yards. Looks like he picked up about three. I think they're probably going to spot him at the around the 29. Oh, right on the 30. I have a bad angle. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Third and eight as the Warriors will come to the line again. Big play again for the Bulldogs. They'd like to hold here. Swing pass out to the left side is complete. That's Luke Brown. He's going to be brought down shy of the first down. Looks like he made it down to about the 25, which is still going to be three yards or so short. So they're looking at fourth and about three and a half. So this is an even bigger play for both teams. They're, the Warriors realistically are too close to the end zone to punt. It's too far for a field goal, so their other choice by default is to go for it on fourth and three and see if they can punch it across the first down marker. And go for it they will with 7.25 to go and counting here in the third quarter as Schweikert and some of his Offensive teammates check their wristbands for the play call. Again in that modified pistol. And we've got movement up front. Everybody moved, but the ball stayed where it was. 
and the referees didn't actually the officials didn't throw a flag until all the movement was complete it's almost like they were trying to figure out who was guilty of what so it'll be kind of interesting to see how this is interpreted i suspect that there might be a zebra conference and there is and our referee calls false start against the Warriors. That'll back them up five, so that turns a fourth and three into a fourth and eight. And we will see now what the Warriors elect to do. They could try to punt to the sideline and try to do a coffin corner kick, but that does not look like that's what their intention is. They're still gonna go for it. So. The Bulldogs would really like to hold them and get the ball back at this point. Close game, could turn on this play. Schweikert to throw, complete, near the first down, he's got it, and he's dragged down by Quentin Hunter. And that will be a first and 10. Austin Powers in the uh, crowd saying, yeah, baby. <laughs> Quentin Hunter on the coverage and able to make the tackle, but not before they picked up the first down. So on a fourth and eight, you would the think, Warriors are able to convert. And you would think that the Bulldogs at this point would like to say, how about no, Mr. Powers? <laughs> 6.25 to go and <laughs> counting. You're in the third quarter. I do a better Dr. Evil than I do Austin Powers. I, really? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Throw me a freaking bone here, Dave. <laughs> Timeout called by Schweikert and the Warriors as they didn't like something there. I don't like the fact that you insulted my Dr. Evil impression. I, I apologize if I hurt your feelings. Can I make it up to you by mentioning our sponsors? I suppose. All right, let's do that. The folks who are making this broadcast of River City Bulldogs football possible are Hooligans Pub and Eatery. That would be Fitworks. <laughs> Dr. Fwada Mayor. Waycross Community Media and Mini Me. LA Fitness. Buffalo Wild Wings. Dr. Nicholas Payne and Payne Chiropractic. Unlimited carpentry. And new on board tonight, the recruiting arm of the U.S. Marine Corps. We thank all of our sponsors for making our insanity possible this evening. Ball on the ground. It's picked up by Jontez Jones, and he heads back toward the line of scrimmage. He'll actually pick up a couple of yards. And that's just a bad break for the dogs right there. Hoorah, baby. Yeah. 5.55 and counting in the third quarter. And that will bring up a second and six. The clock is still running with 5.45 left in the third quarter. And as I've repeatedly said, this series here is going to be a big swing in who eventually comes out and wins this game. Schweikert to throw. He's looking over the middle. That one's picked off by the dogs, and this could be six. He's off to the races, and it's over. He is gone. That is number five. Is that Tevin Redman? I believe it is. Tevin Redman indeed with the interception return, and that one is going to be about 75 yards for a touchdown. Outstanding play. Great read on the coverage by Tevin Redmond. Caught it right in the bread basket, and he was off to the races. Including so, the celebratory dive into the end zone. Indeed. 24 to 13 now is our score, and that's a big-time momentum swing in this game with 5.17 to go in the third quarter. And once again, the turnover rears its ugly head for the Warriors as they had something working offensively, and Tevin Redmond simply was having none of it. And that is a huge swing. That's a potentially 12 points or more swing there. And that, you know, there's a lot of football left to play, but that is definitely a dagger into the heart of the Warriors. And he just outran everybody. There wasn't anybody who had a clean shot at him or was even close to having a shot at him either. Well, 75-yard interception return. Jerrain Payton of the Warriors uh, tried 
But uh, when he saw that he had a blocker between him and the ball carrier, he just kind of uh, watched him watched him go. So as clean a pick six as I've seen pretty much all this season. Absolutely. 24-13 is the score as the dogs set up to go for two once again. Rias in the shotgun, takes the snap, and he looks to throw. He's flushed to his right, directing some traffic. He will try to throw into the end zone incomplete. They will rule that the ball hit the ground before Kenny Brown was able to grab it. So that will leave our score at 24 to 13. That's the fourth unsuccessful going for two that the uh, two-point conversion that the uh, Bulldogs have tried. So instead of um, 28 points, they have 24. And if they had been 50-50 on those, they would have, uh, they'd still have 28. But still, they are up by 11 points. Two scores, it is a two-score game once again, and that is big. And Tevin Redman has come over to the sidelines. He stripped off his pads. He stripped off his helmet as if to say, I don't know about y'all, but my job is done for the evening. I'm taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, both coaches <laughs> at the beginning of this game were talking about the running game. And this game has turned on the passing game, both effective and ineffective, from both teams. We've seen more interceptions tonight than I actually thought that we would but with the exception of one fumble every turnover that has been seen so far from both teams has been an interception i believe um if i recall correctly that uh, the warriors got a pick six on the bulldogs and then the bulldogs just returned the favor with a pick six of their own so once again here comes the kickoff which Contains a little bit more drama than Coach Scott would probably like because one of the up men has been catching that ball around the 35 or 40 yard line. So we'll see what happens this time. If they can get it over his head, if he can get it past the 40 or the 35, the uh, Bulldogs will have a chance to pin the Warriors a little deeper. Ball flies all the way to the 20. So that goal has been accomplished. However, Ball carrier is still on his feet and finally brought down at the 43-yard line of the Bulldogs. It looks to me like that was number 25, Chance Freeman for the Warriors, bringing the ball back already into Bulldog territory and putting the Bulldogs on the defensive once again on their own side of the field. 5.09 to go now in the third quarter, and the Warriors will set up shop at the Dogs' 43-yard line. Looks like Coach Scott is uh, giving some last-minute instructions to his defense as the Warriors come to the line, still in the same formation they've been taking care of all night. Handoff is to number five for the Warriors, who is all the way past the first down marker and down out of bounds about the 24-yard line. That is John Tez Jones. So in two plays, a kickoff and one running play, all of a sudden the Bulldogs are back on their own 25-yard line, so the Warriors are making quick work of the limited time they have left in this game, trying to get back into the game by scoring on the Bulldogs yet again. So, again, in going to the announcer cliche book, there's still a lot of football left to play. Once again, Jones takes the ball to the outside, running around the left side, but the Bulldogs manage to string him out. He goes out behind the uh, tents that are kind of obstructing our view, but it looks like he managed to pick up about three yards. So the Warriors are looking at second and seven back when they come up to take the ball once again with uh, Schweikert calling the plays. Schweiger brings him up to the line again with a second and seven now. And he will hand off to Jones, who picks his way around the right side, picks up some great blocking. That's another first down for the Warriors. And they will absolutely not go quietly here in the second half. They're having some success running the ball against the Bulldogs now, so that might be the fatigue factor that uh, we discussed earlier in the game with a, uh, with a short roster and a couple of folks that had been playing sitting on the sidelines now for the Bulldogs. So 
that uh, those big men at the uh, on the line for the Bulldogs, fatigue may be setting in for them because people don't have limitless endurance, as you well know. Schweiker will keep it himself, and he will run and high step into the end zone. That's a Warriors touchdown. And just like that, they are back within one score at 24 to 19. And that was less than two minutes of clock time from when they took that kickoff until they were in the end zone. So the Bulldogs have their work cut out for them defensively if they plan on trying to hold the Warriors, because as you said, Dave, the Warriors are not going to roll over and play dead here. They are going to come back and see if they can score once again. And they have a chance to get within four points. So with as many interceptions and turnovers as we've seen and as many big plays as we've seen, this game is going to turn a couple of different ways before, uh, before it's finally done. So there's lots of drama, lots of football left. Indeed there is. Mark Deal is on to attempt the extra point. Snap, place, kick, and this one is up and through. That makes our score 24 to 20 in favor of the River City Bulldogs with 4-12 to go here in the third quarter. And if Deal can hit an extra point from the 10-yard line, he can kick a field goal from the 10 or 15-yard line. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about last year's matchup uh, in the first half, last year's matchup between these two teams. And uh, it was quite the nail biter as uh, the Warriors pulled it out with a late two point conversion. They won 32 to 31. And that's something that I'm sure is weighing on the minds of the Bulldogs and their coaching staff. And, and uh, they are hoping to maybe pad this lead a little bit more if they can with 412 remaining in the third. Coach Scott is nearly out to the numbers, uh, pointing emphatically at some of his players, uh, putting them in position for the kickoff. He feels that they were out of position, hopefully bringing up some of the uh, players up a little bit closer to the ball than one would normally expect for a kickoff, but both teams have had trouble getting the ball down the, uh, down the yard lines uh, than they would normally during the kickoff. So they're kicking off from the 35-yard line. Coach Scott obviously expects a short kick because his deep men are all the way up to the 25. And Deal will kick it away. Foot goes to Leather, and he gets into this one. It is a line drive kick that's taken by Kendall Owens, and he is going to be brought down at the just inside the 20-yard line. We'll call that the... Uh, looks 18, like they'll perhaps. spot him at the 20. And that's where the Bulldogs will take over. I thought he caught it a little deeper than that, but uh, in this case, it's a little bit more of a generous spot for the Bulldogs. So it'll be first and 10 for the Dogs from their own 20-yard line. And they will try to work some of their own offensive magic. A good development for the Bulldogs here would be a seven or eight minute drive that culminates in a score. So they have a two point, a two touchdown lead or two score lead with about 10 minutes left in the game. I think that would be something that Coach Scott would be pleased with. Cam Rias looking to throw. He's got Kenny Brown along the right sideline and Brown unable to hold on. That was a high arching throw that uh, Reyes cut loose with. Uh, Tried to drop that one down the silo. Encouraging some of the Warrior players to play center field, perhaps. Fortunately, uh, the coverage wasn't as tight as it, as it could have been, or that, uh, that ball had the potential, shall we say, to, uh, to be intercepted. And had a Warrior caught that, there weren't too many Bulldogs between them and the end zone. Coach Scott is addressing the defense on the sideline as Rias takes the snap and looks to throw again. Now he's flushed to his left, and he will keep it. He gets the edge, and he is dragged down. And we'll see. Are they going to call that a no? They won't call that a horse collar. It was a gain of about four. And it looked from our vantage point on the other side of the field as though that one might have been... Uh, 
a tackle of the horse collar variety. It looked but, pretty close, but uh, we have said that before, and um, the referees have not called that. It's just like I said last time, uh, it was an anomaly that the referees, uh, or actually the officials, there's only one referee, as you know, yes. um, were quite free with their flags. I think both teams probably had in excess of 100 yards worth of penalties the last time we were here. Mm -hmm. Third down and six now for the dogs as Rias swings it out to Keith Scott and he's going to be taken down immediately for no gain. I and think I think the Warriors kind of had that play down. Uh, that is the third or fourth time that the Bulldogs have tried that play and the uh, Bulldog or the Warrior defenders that are coming up uh, shutting down the outside have uh, have sniffed that out every time. So that actually lost him a couple of yards, and that will bring up a fourth and seven. And Robbie Scott is on to punt it away for the dogs. Discretion being the better part of valor for Coach Scott and the Bulldogs at this point, hoping to turn it over to their defense and have the defense hold the Warriors, hopefully back in their own territory. The deep man for the Warriors is standing on the 37-yard line. And we will see what happens with the punt. And Scott gets away a nice spiral that will turn over for him. That's deep into the Warriors territory. It'll be downed at the 35. So with 2.10 to go here in the third quarter and the Dogs leading 24 to 20, the Warriors will take over at their own 35-yard line as Coach Mark Scott's defense takes the field. Looks like Arrington is back in on defense for the uh, Bulldogs at uh, number seven. So we'll see if the uh, counseling that uh, Coach Scott was giving his defense a few minutes ago will uh, have a positive effect on their play on the field. He, uh, he wasn't fooling around he was on the sidelines. He, he was very verbose he was exhorting them he was indeed so Schweikert in that pistol formation again high snap he's flush to his right he's looking to throw and he does and overshoots his man that was intended for number 33 Luke Brown but in actuality he was running for his life and he's lucky that he uh, didn't get that one intercepted at that point I think it was uh, time to throw it out to the sidelines in the quote vicinity of a receiver <laughs> dogs able to get a good amount of pressure that time as we see Arrington up on the line again both quarterbacks have been uh, flushed from the pocket more than once tonight and off to Jones in the backfield and he will dance out to the left but he will be brought down for a loss and that is number four, Aaron Kelly, on the tackle for the Dogs. Whatever Coach Scott said to the Bulldog defense, it certainly has appeared to be working over the last couple of plays because the Warriors are suddenly looking at third and 11 inside their own territory. Harrington in that right defensive end slot now plays with his hand on the ground for this one and the officials are going to blow this dead. And we'll see what the call is here. Well, obviously it's a call for motion of some sort. It just depends on uh, who they saw twitching. I think they may have just called a timeout. Timeout has been charged on the scoreboard to the Warriors. The Warriors having one. No, it hasn't. Actually, yes, it has. According to the scoreboard, they have one timeout left for the rest of the second half. Yes, two timeouts in the third quarter, which is uh, usually not something that uh, coaches like to do. So it must be. Uh, Coach Rice must have thought that it was an urgent matter to discuss to burn a timeout in the third quarter because this game is not out of reach by either team and Coach Rice with three or four minutes left in the game might fervently wish that he had that timeout back. Absolutely. 
52 seconds showing on the clock to go in the third quarter as the Warriors break their huddle and the coaches head back to the sidelines slowly slowly 24-20 is our score Bulldogs showing blitz they're not backing off and they drop back out of it now as Schweikert looks to throw, and that was intended for number 13, Jermaine Payton. Tight defense there. Michael Weber on the Bulldog or the Warriors and others, and some in the crowd were looking for a pass interference uh, call on that play, but the uh, referees did not comply. And as we've said before, their opinions are the only ones that count. Indeed, and and truthfully. They might have gotten away with one there. There was there was uh, some shirt grabbing going on, but uh, oh, surely not. No harm, no foul. Fourth and eleven now. As Schweikert will drop back into what appears to be punt formation. The ball spotted at the Warriors 34. So you have to you have to pause when the quarterback for the other team is also the punter. You've always got to that brings the fake punt to mind even more. Absolutely. And we are showing triple zeros on the scoreboard, so that is the end of the third quarter. Coach Scott is walking out nearly to midfield, talking to members of his defense while the uh, referee has not yet moved the ball to the Bulldog side of the field. This is essentially, without any movement by the chain gang or the officials, uh, this is essentially a free timeout for both teams because there has been no attempt as of yet to place the ball on the other end of the field. But it looks like the Warriors are finally moving in that direction. And there they go. So that is, in fact, the end of the third quarter. And we will tell you once more about the five folks who are making this broadcast possible this evening through the facilities and auspices of Waycross Community Media. And the purview. The purview, nice, yes. nice. Northern Frontier Football League action and the River City Bulldogs in particular are brought to you tonight by Hooligans Pub and Eatery. By FitWorks Fitness Centers. By Dr. Fouad Amer. Waycross Community Media at www.waycrosstv. The fine folks bringing you the broadcast this evening. By LA Fitness. By Buffalo Wild Wings Grill and Bar. By Dr. Nicholas Payne and Payne Chiropractic. By Unlimited Carpentry. And by your local United States Marine Corps recruiters. So glad you could join us this evening. Alongside Wayne Gates, I am Dave Borst, and you are watching, watching, pardon me, the River City Bulldogs take on the Kentucky Warriors in Northern Frontier Football League action. We are just about to get the fourth quarter underway. Schweiger kicks it away for the Warriors, and back to receive is Kendall Owens. He will take it at the 30, makes a couple of moves. He's out to the 40, across the 45, and he'll be run out of bounds near midfield. And that's where the dogs will take over. Four point lead, 15 minutes left, ball at the 50 yard line. So the ball, is, the game is still very much in the hands of the Bulldogs as they continue to play in this uh, fourth quarter. And the Warriors are saying that uh, Owens threw up a fair catch signal there, but uh, the officials apparently do not agree. And as we've stated so many times, their opinion is the only one that matters. So it will be first and 10 for the dogs just inside their own territory at the 49 is where they'll spot it. That actually, uh, if you could get away with it, that's actually kind of sneakily smart. Uh, yeah, uh, fair catch. And then they back off. Uh, oh, sorry. As uh, in internet parlance, LOL JK. <laughs> <laughs> although they probably wouldn't be as amused. So the officials are TTYL, <laughs> BRB. <laughs> yeah. 
saying you're killing me. And they are going to throw a flag on the dogs after the officials have huddled at the 45-yard line, throwing a very late flag. So then they will call the dogs for advancing a fair catch. So they are buying the argument by the Warriors. That's a uh, not a positive development for the Bulldogs. So Kendall Owens guilty of signaling the fair catch and then taking off running after he did indeed catch the ball. And that will back the dogs up to the 30 yard line rather than the 49. So in essence, a 19 yard penalty. So the referees respond to the LOL with an LMAO. Indeed they did. Easy now, it's a family show. 24 to 20 is our score with 14.48 to go in the game. First and 10 for Cam Rias and the River City Bulldogs as they come to the line. An LMBO, perhaps. There you go. Rias takes the snap. He's looking to throw. He's under pressure again. Rolls to his right. He throws, and this one is out of bounds. Intended for the aforementioned Kendall Owens. Three or four yards short in front of Owens, but there really wasn't any danger of any interception at that point because the ball may have actually been out of bounds by the time it reached him. Of course, we can't tell from our angle. It was the far side of the field. It is the far side of the field. It was always one of my favorite comic strips growing up, the far side. I love that. Second and 10 for the dogs from their own 30. You ever see the one that... Uh, the spiders built the web at the bottom of the slide in the playground. One of them says to the other, if we pull this off, we'll eat like kings. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorites, of course, the, uh, the Midvale School for the Gifted. Yes, where he's trying to. The picture of the kid pushing on the door that says pull. 14-10 to go now in the game as Rias brings him to the line. He is looking to throw again, and the ball is loose. And it is picked up by the dogs, but that's going to be a big loss. They will lose about seven on the play as that one appeared to get knocked out of the hands of Cam Rias. And everything going the way of the Kentucky Warriors right now as that brings up a third and we'll call it 15. Well, I suspect the Bulldogs would prefer third and 15 to having a fumble picked up and run in for a score. Indeed. At least they still have their own destiny in their hands. Uh, 14 minutes, 14 possibly long minutes left in the game if you're a Bulldog fan. Dogs are clinging to a 24-20 lead. And who isn't? Indeed. Rias looking to throw. Rolls to his right, buying some time. Now he's going to take off around the edge. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, and that will bring up a fourth and ten. On the 30, big decision now for Coach Scott. Do not really want to turn the ball over to the opposing team on your own 30-yard line. And it looks like Cam Rias is coming to the sidelines and Robbie Scott will drop back into punt formation for the Bulldogs as their punting unit comes on. 13-20 and counting. Not exactly sure why that clock is running. He did step out of bounds, but yes, running nonetheless. And again, that's good news if you're a Bulldogs fan. And who isn't? <laughs> Unless they call a delay of game on them. Black and red till I'm cold and dead, baby. <laughs> Scott gets it away. Another good kick for him. It's taken at the 35, but he's got some running room. He gets across midfield and down to about... The 40-yard line of the Bulldogs, and that is Number Jermaine Payton again. Payton. He's been having a big night for He's the Warriors. He has had a big night, especially in punt returns. He's probably upwards of 60 or 70 punt return yards at this point, doing, uh, doing quite well in his, uh, in his role as punt returner. So the Warriors will once again start in Bulldog territory, this time on the 40-yard line with 12-48 left in the game and only down by four. So if they get in the end zone, they'll take the lead for the first time in the entire game in the fourth quarter. 
And we'll see what Coach Scott's defense has to say about that as they're showing blitz, and here they come. Flags fly. Schweiker throwing down the middle, and it's bounced around, and it falls incomplete. But we'll see what the flag back at the line of scrimmage is all about. Michael Weber for the Warriors was not able to hold on to that ball. If it's against the Bulldogs, he's going to wish he'd brought it in. Still no indication about... Uh, Side judge is uh, motioning an offsides against the Warriors. Who seem to be giving ground. So it would not have counted had he made that spectacular catch. Yeah, Weber tried to tip that to himself and was unsuccessful as we get the official indication from the referee that brings up a repeat first down. It'll be first and 15 now with the ball spotted at the 45 yard line of the dogs. Since they tried to go for it all in one play here, perhaps they are trying to loosen up the Bulldog defense for another run. Justin Young steaming into the backfield, but the ball carrier was already past him. And that's good for about four yards. That'll bring up a second and 11. Sean Arrington also back in the backfield of the uh, Warriors. That's the risk you take when you aggressively blitz. Sometimes the uh, ball ends up past you. And if you'd stayed home, you could tackle for a, for a relatively modest loss or, or something like that. But uh, a price to pay sometimes for, uh, for blitzing, especially if they get it behind you. So second and 11 for the Warriors at the Dogs 42 yard line. Schweiker to throw again. He's got a man and that one is complete. That's good down to the 10 yard line. That's gonna set up a first and goal for the Warriors. That's number five, John Tez Jones. Jones had quite a bit of separation between him and the Bulldog defenders. So it was a relatively uh, easy throw and catch for the, uh, for the Warriors. So first and goal now. And we will see if the defense can stiffen for the dogs. We're closing down on 11 minutes. Definitely an entertaining contest this evening, Dave. It has indeed been that. Schweikert keeps it himself. Quarterback draw. He goes around the left side, and he is in. No, they're going to mark him just short. No, the near side judge rules he's into the end zone, and that will give the Kentucky Warriors their first lead of the evening at 26 to 24 with 10.51 to go here in the fourth quarter. Coach Scott does not seem to be pleased on the Bulldog sideline. Indeed he's not. And Mark Deal will come on to attempt the extra point. Schweikert to hold. Coach Scott almost apoplectic. I ain't touching that one. <laughs> Snap, place, kick, and it's good. It just barely got over the crossbar, but that's all it has to do. So 27-24 is our new score here in the fourth quarter with 10.51 to go. And the dogs trailing for the first time this evening. And we will see what they can do when they get the ball back. Apoplectic is really mad. I didn't need the... Uh... Didn't need the app for that. It's just really mad. Okay. All right. It's it's above vexed or nonplussed. Wow, really? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it ranks pretty high on the scale. So the defense is uh, actually the offense is getting some uh, instruction from Coach Scott, Coach Metzger, as the Warriors prepare to kick off. And it looks like they're trying to get the uh, kick return team sorted out. 
Coach Scott also threw his hands in the air and turned and looked at the press box like he might be frustrated with uh, perhaps the clock operator or something along those lines because we've seen a little bit of a little bit of strangeness as far as that clock goes this evening. Mm -hmm. Running when it shouldn't, not running when it should, that sort of thing. Deal kicks it away. And this one will be fielded by Owens at the 21. He comes back toward the middle of the field. Makes a couple of men miss. He's still on his feet. He's out across the 40, across midfield to the far side and down the sidelines into Warriors territory. And they will give him the ball, mark him at the 40-yard line. So the Dogs will have excellent starting field position with 10.40 to go in the ball game, trailing now by three. 27 to 24. Still anybody's game, obviously. Lots of uh, lots of football yet to play with 10:40. If the if the Bulldogs can manage to burn some clock here and get in the end zone, that would put them in a pretty favorable position because you would think that the Warriors would get the ball back with six or seven minutes left on the clock. Plenty of time for them to score because they scored in less than two minutes of clock time in, back in the first half. Dogs break the huddle and come to the line. First and 10 at the Warriors 40 yard line. Three receivers to the right. Demontre Watkins in the backfield with Rias. Swing pass. That one's good for Dakota Kidd. He will get close to the first down and he will have it. I believe we'll see where they mark him out of bounds. It looked to me like he got to the first down marker without much question. Of course, it is on the far side. It is indeed. That They will spot it right at the 30, so that will be good for a dog's first down. Rias takes the snap, looks to throw again. That one's complete to Nick Metzger. That one's good for about five yards. A couple of uh, Rice's throws have been low mm -hmm. this evening and not giving the uh, receivers a chance to uh, chance to turn and run. But, of course, I'm sure a five-yard gain is uh, nothing to be upset about. Really, really high snap for Rice that uh, he had to deal with. And uh, all he could really do at that point was uh, try to advance the ball straight, in, straight into the line and got back to the original line of scrimmage. So the uh, Bulldogs kind of... Uh, Broke even on that play, but uh, Rice is lucky that ball didn't go back over his head. Third down now for the Dogs with 9.24 and counting in the ball game. They are at the 23-yard line of the Warriors. Again, a high snap for Rias. Rolls to his right. He's looking to throw. He's got to get rid of it. He does. It's complete, and it's close to the first down. I don't think they're going to give it to him. I think they're going to say that he was less than a yard shy. That was Demontre Watkins on the reception. And again, as I said, a very high snap for Rias to deal with. Kind of juggled that when uh, through the timing of the playoff. Mm -hmm. So that will bring up a fourth and one. Looks a little longer than that. Looks like he, they, they're saying that uh, the receiver went out of bounds a little bit uh, further away than they thought. So we'll call it fourth and two then. Big play here for the Dogs. Potentially game-changing play here for the Dogs. Raya's rolling to his left, looking to throw across the middle. It's intercepted. That's Jordan again. And he will be brought down at the 24-yard line. So the dogs turn it over once again, an interception. And that's Mason Jordan once again for the Kentucky Warriors. That's got to be, what, his second or third? At least. And a couple of uh, Bulldog helmets thrown in disgust at that, uh, at that development. So... Mental discipline at this point for the Bulldogs is going to be something that they are going to have to maintain. They can't let the anger and frustration of that interception affect their play on the field or they'll just put themselves in a deeper hole. 
8-10 to go now in the contest with the Warriors leading 27 to 24. First and 10 at their own 24 yard line. Bulldogs have one mission, that's to keep the Warriors out of the end zone. Errington cheating up, looking to blitz, now backing off. Hand off to Luke Brown, he reverses his field, he goes down, that's a big loss as a, somebody's helmet goes flying. Looks that's like uh, John Tez Jones who lost his headgear there. When uh, he tried to reverse his field, his feet went right out from under him. So at long last, we might have an indication of uh, the rain before the game coming to, into effect here. Uh, haven't had really had any whole lot of effect there, but it really looked like he slipped and fell when he tried to reverse his field. Loss of 10 on the play. That brings up a second and 20 now for the Warriors. Bulldogs could gamble here with a blitz, having them pinned all the way back because if they try to defeat the Blitz with a short dump off, they've still got them pretty far back behind the line of scrimmage. Dogs showing Blitz again. Handoff. This time to Brown again. He goes over the right side for a couple. Looked like the Warriors were uh, dragging the count out a little bit, hoping to get one of the Bulldogs to jump off sides because they appeared to be very, very eager to blitz. But uh, the Bulldogs didn't bite. And now the Warriors are still looking at third and 15 deep in Bulldog territory. One timeout remaining for the Warriors, two timeouts remaining for the Bulldogs. So the Warriors only have one more chance to stop play. Schweigert hit in the chest with that snap as flags fly on the play. That's going to be a free play. It looks like the Dogs did come across the line early that time. That will turn a third and 17 into a third and 12 if in fact that is the call from our officiating crew. Line discipline at this point would be a very good thing for the Bulldogs to maintain because you don't want to let them up off the mat with uh, a mistake like that. The officials are huddling. And it is an offsides call against the Dogs, so it will be a third and 12 after they march off the penalty here. A couple of big plays ahead for the Bulldogs. If they can hold the Warriors here, get the ball back, get a couple of first downs, they have a really good chance of taking this game to the house. But those are a couple of tall orders because the Warriors are not laying down or going home quite yet. Third and 12 is our score. Third and 12, pardon me. 27-24 is our score. In favor of the Warriors. Schweigert looking to throw. Now he steps up in the pocket and throws over the middle. And that one almost could have been called pass interference against Darian Washington, but no laundry on the field. So that will bring up fourth and 12. Intended receiver was Andre Canada, and Schweigert really fired that ball, hopefully to hit his own target. And looked like he may have just thrown it a little too hard, and Canada couldn't handle it. Five fifty-nine to go now in the ball game. Of course, it's not like it hit. Can I'm not trying to say it hit Canada in the numbers or anything, but uh, the ball seemed to be past Canada before he turned to look for it. So, quarterback for the Warriors may have rushed that throw a bit, and now looks like he's back to punt. Or is he? Or is he? Indeed. And he does kick it away. It's kind of a low, wobbly kick. It's taken at the 37. That's Kendall Owens. He dances across midfield, and he'll be dropped at the Warriors' 47-yard line. So No indication of a fair catch that time, Dave. No, indeed. Not that time. So the Dogs will have it first and 10 at the Warriors' 47. Three, three first downs, perhaps? Somewhere around there with 5.42 to go. 
If they can get three first downs on the ground, I think that would run out the clock. Well, they've got to punch it in here at some point. Yes, a touchdown definitely would, uh, would help considering they're down three points. That would put some pressure on the Warriors indeed. Five minutes and 42 seconds and 47 yards are separating the Bulldogs from uh, victory. Rias hands off underneath to Watkins. He's right up the gut. That is going to be close to a first down. We'll see where they spot him. They should give it to him because it looked like he made it all the way down to the 36. And they're going to spot him just about a yard shy. So second and one. Again, a handoff to Watkins. He bounces to the right this time, picks up the first down and a few extra yards. Forward progress to perhaps the 33, but definitely a first down. Clock is still running, even though it's supposed to stop when they move the chains. And now the referee signals to stop the clock with 4.50 to go in the game. And the chain gang still has not moved. As he signals the clock again to run, and it does. That's complete to Kendall Owens. Forward progress to the 30 and then dropped all the way back at the 35. So that one's good for about four yards. That'll bring up a... Uh, we'll call it three, so that'll bring up second and seven. Rias to throw. He's got a man down the middle. It was Owens, and it was off his hand. Had a chance at that ball, but unable to hold on. That brings up third and seven now for the Dogs. Rias is still dealing with uh, some relatively high snaps. He is catching the ball up at eye level rather than at uh, stomach level, and he's having to readjust his throwing motion as a result of that. So that might be throwing his timing off just a little bit. Coach Scott is uh, sending hand signals and gesturing from the sidelines. Rias looking to throw flag on the play. He takes off up the middle, does Cam Rias, and now bounces to the right side, around the right end, and is run out of bounds. About the Inside the 15, and we'll see what the laundry is all about as the referee is not moving. Given the timing of the play, I think it's going to be illegal motion on the Bulldogs. And they are indeed walking backwards. Considering the run by Rias, that would be a painful result indeed. And false start is the call. So that will bring up a third and 12. But it makes you wonder, you know, normally on a false start, false start call, they stop the action right away. It's uh, usually on an offside call when they allow the action to continue. That's basically a free play for the offense. Exactly, so they can decline the penalty if they want to based on the outcome. Yeah. But the referees are ref the officials. There is only one referee. Yes. I know. Um, are letting even offensive series plays continue when the foul is on the offensive team. Very interesting. Third and 12 now with 4.01 to go. The dogs trail 27 to 24 as Rias pumps to his left and now he's gonna be sacked. That's all the way back to the 47 yard line. That's number 52, Drawery Taylor. Warriors fans like that. Indeed they did. Bulldogs call timeout with fourth and 22 
or 23. And getting, getting close to fourth in a country mile there. Yes, almost a country mile. And getting ready to uh, getting ready to turn the ball over. So now a difficult choice. I think that they are going to punt because going for it would risk an incomplete pass would give the Warriors the ball at the 50. You don't want to do that. And there have been already some successful, including a pick six interception from the Bulldogs secondary. So in my opinion, the best thing to do would be to try to punt, pin the Warriors back maybe on the 10 or 15 yard line and then hope your defense can work a miracle because if the Warriors can get a couple of first downs and drag their feet, this game is going to be over. Mm -hmm. Three minutes and 43 seconds remaining. And a big decision to make for the Bulldogs. And Cam Rias is staying on the field. So it looks like the decision has been made. It's going to be fourth and 22. And I got to believe the game rides on this play right here. Absolutely it does. 27-24, the Warriors lead. I think it's all going to be on the shoulders and legs of Cam Rice at this point. Oh, my. And the Warriors came across. So they gained another five yards there. The long count and anticipation and impatience of the Warriors uh, combined to uh, get free, five free yards for the Bulldogs, get them a little closer to their goal. So that'll be fourth and 17. With Rice's arm, that is not unattainable. No, it's not. He's He's got a cannon for an arm, absolutely. He just needs time to get rid of the ball. And he has he's got time. it this time. He throws to the left side and it falls incomplete. The intended receiver, I believe, was Barrington Savage. And the dogs will turn it over on downs, and They'll have that it could be all she wrote. The Warriors are going to get the ball on their own 43. And if they can get a couple of first downs and keep that clock running. And the Bulldogs are also now down to one timeout. So I suspect the... Warriors will employ a leisurely pace on offense from this point forward. They certainly don't seem to be in a hurry right now, do they? <laughs> With 3.43 to go and the ball and the lead. First and 10 now at the 42. Well, the clock won't start this time until the snap, but I think in subsequent plays they will be snapping the ball with three or four seconds left, if that, on the play clock. It's like the Bulldogs are really wanting to blitz hard. And it burned them. That was, that's Jones again for a first down run. Clock Across is running. Midfield. It should have stopped for moving the chains, but it, it has not. I'm not sure if they do that in this league. I, I know they do in college. The, the clock will stop for the chains to move, but I know in the NFL it doesn't, and I, I did Evidently, they don't do it in this league either. And these are NFL rules, apparently, yeah. because they are they have a two-minute warning. Yeah. So first and 10 for the Warriors at the Dogs' 46-yard line. Clock is running, and the Warriors are just now approaching the ball at said leisurely pace. Weigert will hand off to Jones around the left edge again, and he will get out of bounds after a gain of about six. Should have tried to remain in bounds. I'm not sure exactly why he didn't. Would have, would have eaten some more clock as it is. It's 2.40 to go now in the ball game. Brings up a second and four. Schweikert again in that modified pistol formation. Takes the snap. 
Underneath handoff, that is Luke Brown. And down he goes, close to the first down. Looks like he came down about the 38. The first down's at the 36 and a half. I don't think they're going to give it to him. Apparently going to mark him just shy. Third and one. So would this be the play with the game on the line? Third and one. Clock running. Well, they're going to get some time to talk about it as we have come to the two-minute warning with our score. The Kentucky Warriors 27, the River City Bulldogs 24. And we'll take this opportunity to tell you once more about the fine folks who make this broadcast possible. We appreciate you being with us. Alongside Wayne Gates, I am Dave Borst. We are brought to you through the facilities of Waycross Community Media. And we appreciate our disembodied voice of wisdom in the truck and all of the crew this evening. The crew has uh, provided us with some excellent camera shots, which we appreciate. Wouldn't be able to do it without them. Two-minute warning is continuing on the field as both teams are going over their uh, going over their strategy. I would suspect they're probably trying to talk about more than just the next play because uh, they may not have one more chance to talk. Both teams are uh, preparing to wrap up the game. A lot of vocal Warriors fans down below us. The Warriors seem to have the situation in hand. If they can gain another yard and a half, they can drag their feet and the clock will continue to run and the, Warrior, the Bulldogs will not be able to stop it. So <clears throat> we keep talking about big plays, but they don't come any bigger than the next two. Third and one, and uh, if the Warriors are able to pick up this first down, I got to believe that the, the Dogs' hopes for a third straight win are going to go up and smoke. On the other hand, if the Bulldogs can stop them here and force them to punt, they'll have a chance. They'll have less than two minutes and probably 80, yard, 80 yards or more to go, but I'm sure that they would like that opportunity. Now, do you try to draw the Bulldogs off sides? I would. I'd try a long, hard count and try to uh, get my first down that way. Handoff underneath to, no, fake handoff. Excuse me, Schweiker kept it himself. He got close to the first down, but where are they going to spot him? The spot here could decide the game, but it looks like they're flipping that over to fourth down and backing it up a couple of yards. Timeout called now by the Bulldogs. That is their last one with 1.41 to go. They're spotting the ball at the 37. First down looks like it's just past the 36, so it looks like it's less than a yard. So we'll call it fourth and almost one. And here is indeed the biggest play of the ball game thus far. They certainly don't look like they intend to punt, do they? No. No, and... Uh, I would be shocked if they did. I'm sure the Bulldogs would like the ball back. They would prefer it on the 37 rather than on the 10. But 141 left in the game, and this next play will probably take 10 or 11 seconds regardless of what happens. So it looks like if the Bulldogs are going to get the ball back, they're going to have about a minute and a half to go 60 yards to try to put this game back in the victory column. Coach Scott runs off the field. Schweiker and the Warriors come to the line, fourth and one. Line discipline gonna be very important here in the next 10 seconds. Bulldogs pack the line. 11 in the box. And a timeout called. As the Warriors were trying to draw them off sides, and that means nobody has any timeouts left. It looked like the uh, Warriors might have had two goals there. First, to try to draw the Bulldogs off sides, and they didn't bite. And second, maybe they wanted to see how the Bulldogs were going to uh, 
come up defensively, and the Bulldogs had 11 men in the box. So that would leave them vulnerable should the Warriors decide to do so to fake a handoff to the middle of the line and then try to stretch the field out and perhaps throw just a, a short dump off pass perhaps across the field where they don't expect it. If uh, the if Schweiker could throw across his body perhaps to the opposite side of the field, all they need is a couple of yards. It depends on the mindset. Do you go for the two yards? Try to draw them off sides? Do you try to go for it all? Well, we'll see what they decide to do. Fourth and less than a yard. And here is your ball game. Two receivers on the right side, two setbacks for Schweikert. Everybody else up on the line. Schweikert will keep it. Pitch out to the left. That's Jontez Jones around the corner. And that is going to be that as he will take it into the end zone. After killing some more clock, actually, he's going to down it inside the five-yard line. So with 1.26 to go, the Warriors will have it at the five-yard line, just inside the five, actually. He did pull up short because that's what they wanted to do. They've, mm -hmm. got, they've got their first down so they can run the clock out without the Bulldogs to get a chance to get the ball back. So some intelligent clock and play management on the part of Jamie Rice and the Kentucky Warriors. And a nicely executed option pitch there by Schweikert who uh, got the defense to bite on the fake that he was going to keep the ball, timed the pitch to Jones very well. And the Warriors will now come up in what is known as the victory formation. Couple of knees, and that's the game. 37 seconds and counting. They can take a knee under 30, which they do. That will be the game. I don't expect another play at this point, so it looks like both teams are uh, going to be making their way off the field. And that is it. The Kentucky Warriors end up taking the ball game 27 to 24 and from the, clock the River ticks, City Bulldogs. Clock ticks down inside five seconds. And that, as they say, is that. Will the Dogs' dreams of a three-game winning streak go up in smoke? They fall to 3-3 three and three on the season as the Kentucky Warriors come into the Dogs' home park at Woodward High School and come away with a victory, 27-24. to 24. And we will tell you one more time about the folks who made this broadcast of Northern Frontier Football League football possible. And they are... While they're uh, bringing the sponsors up, Dave, well, never mind. We'll go ahead and do the sponsors, and then I'll say what I was going to say. Hooligans Pub and Eatery. FitWorks Fitness Centers. Dr. Flada Mayor. Waycross Community Media, Waycross TV. L.A. Fitness. Buffalo Wild Wings Grill and Bar. Dr. Nicholas Payne and Payne Chiropractic. Unlimited Carpentry. And your United States Marine Corps recruiters. We thank all of our fine sponsors and all of our crew from Waycross Community Media this evening. Wayne? Well, what I was going to say, Dave, is that one positive of this game is that they're, both teams were respectful and well-behaved on the field. There was didn't seem to be any pushing and shoving or trash talking or anything like that. It seemed like to be a well-professionally played game. And the, uh, there weren't too many penalties. Most of them were procedural in nature. No um, personal fouls. I don't think they had one personal foul this evening. No unsportsmanlike conduct. So as far as the behavior of the teams, tonight was, a, uh, tonight was a good game for them. And with all the talk about the running game from both teams, the game turned on the passing games, specifically interceptions. Indeed it did. And once again, we want to invite you to join us on Saturday, July 26th. That is the next time the River City Bulldogs will take the field. That's the last time this season they'll take the field here at Woodward High School. And we invite you to join us as they take on the Cincinnati Hawks. Kickoff is scheduled for 7 p.m. 
Alongside Wayne Gates, I am Dave Bohr saying thank you for joining us on Waycross Community Media. You've been watching the River City Bulldogs minor league football team, Northern Frontier Football League action brought to you on Waycross Community Media. See you next time, folks. Copies of this program are available for $20 each. Send program title along with your address and check or money order to Waycross Community Media. Attention dub coordinator, 2086 Waycross Road, Forest Park, Ohio, 45240. Or buy securely on the web at www.waycross.tv.